just did a bunch of push-ups, so that means I'm good to go. <laughs> Duh. Hey guys, welcome back to the 5 W's interview show. Uh, my name is Reese Sitter, I am your host, and today we have Anton Singer, lead singer and kind of main man of Collision Course, hard-hitting rock band from Vancouver. Uh, Anton, uh, anything you'd like to say about yourself? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on, man. Uh, yeah, I'm the guitarist and singer of Collision Course, um, founding member and all that. And yeah, no, we're ripping stuff up, so I'm pumped to be here and talk about it. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, Anthon's my, my, my recent kind of new buddy that I met through one of my other really good friends, uh, and we kind of just, like, ended up vibing really well, and now we're buddies, and, uh, yeah, so uh, I decided why not have him on the show. Uh, he's a great time, and uh, should be a good time. So, Anton, are you ready for your first question? Hell yeah. Cool. First up, we have who. Who is someone you couldn't have made it to where you are without? Um, well, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> um, I'd say, um, I, I got two people on that. Um, so I got my dad, um, yep. just because he's influenced me musically. He was a drummer and all that. And he's really pushed me, uh, for all that and been like a really driving force for motivating me with music. And then, um, our mutual friend slash my cousin, uh, Chris, Chris. who's in the band, um, he's also like, he used to be in the band and isn't um anymore but he's still really supportive and really helps and like I, I still look to him for advice sometimes and all that and it's just really good to know that he's kind of in the corner and helped out because he's been in the band with me and now he has an outsider perspective so it's kind of unique to yeah, help with things yeah. but, uh, I, yeah. I relate to that a lot like the chris thing like i don't ever since i met him he's always been like a super supportive and like i turn to him every time like Anytime I have like a creative block on a project, he's like the first guy I go to. And he's, like, oh yeah, always, completely. Like, super supportive. He's like always ready to talk right away, and it's just, like yeah, yeah super great. Uh, yeah, anything I else know. you want to add to that? Uh, I mean you everybody who's been in the band too, but yeah, that cool. that's kind of obvious. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Nice, no problem. Uh, then we're just gonna jump into our second question: or what? What was the biggest challenge of moving the band down from Dawson Creek and keeping it alive all these years? I know this thing has been around for quite a few years, and it definitely looks different than it did when you guys first started it. How much back when? Yeah, that was, uh, we started out 2016, and it just started out kind of like in my parents' garage, and uh, we were pissing off the neighbors with being way too loud and just covering like <laughs> white, white stripes and uh, yeah. like Scott Pilgrim versus the world songs from the movie and all that. And uh, yeah, no, it, it's transitioned quite a lot. And like we went on tour up there and all that and played a whole bunch of shows, but it, it's just like up North, there's not really a music scene compared to Vancouver, Vancouver and Toronto are like the biggest in Canada for music. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I moved down here, and I think the biggest challenge was finding people that I really, like, got along with in the mm -hmm. band. Cause, like, when I auditioned, like, a lot of people. Were you the only came down, member that stayed from it? Because was it just you and Chris that came down? Uh, so, yeah, so it was, it was just me that came down. Chris was still in high school when I came down, mm -hmm. and he made the smart call and didn't want to drop out of high school <laughs> to do the band thing. <laughs> yeah. We probably would have ended up homeless. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was just me. And it was just kind of like, I, I really like, I think anybody when they do a big move first off without any like artistic goals really like questions themselves a lot. And then yeah. with music on top of that and moving down here for that, like I, I always constantly question like, am I making the right choice? Like, and I'm deep enough in, like I got the band name tattooed on me. Like it, and I still go, oh, this whole band thing, like, it, it, it's kind of, <laughs> kind of winging it, you know? Um, but, yeah, no, it was, it was just, like, kind of keeping myself reassured was probably the biggest challenge. And I find finding the right people to be in the band really helped with that. And, mm -hmm. like, when I first moved down here, um, we I found Rob and Adam, and they were the guitarists and bassists that joined, right. and they're friends and all that, and they were really great. And then... Um, we found Jeff, who's still our drummer. Um, we were gonna, we were kind of gonna write him off because we had another guy that was supposed to be our drummer, 
um, that we were auditioning the next day, but we just wanted to get a, extra practice in, and this guy wanted to meet up. And we're like, okay, yeah, we'll jam with him, and then we'll just play with the other guy tomorrow. <laughs> And then and he was just too good, way too good, like astoundingly awesome, oh. um, and and just blew it out of the water, and um, just really passionate, and knows how to like songwrite, and really kind of like the, a lot of people don't know how to properly songwrite with others. That's the thing. Like yeah. it's like playing well with others, and it's not necessarily because they're bad at it. It's just because everyone has their own vibe, right? So like finding that that's the same in other people can be really fucking hard. But. Yeah, I guess we, we didn't mention this, but who who are all are the other members of Collision Course? Um, yeah, so there's TJ Platt, and he's our bassist. Uh, he's from the UK, and he lives here now, obviously. And then uh, Brad Maciotra is our lead guitarist. Um, and then Jeff Toledo is on drums, and then me, I'm Anton Schindler, and I'm the singer, <laughs> guitar, rhythm guitarist, and that's it. We're a four-piece kind of thing, so yeah. Oh, that's sick, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta meet up with these guys sometime. They sound like they'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, once uh, once the world's not ending, we'll get you out to one of our shows, because like, we're planning, we're hoping with uh, these supposed releases that may be coming the soon um, ones that have been teased but never released yeah yeah no set date or anything yeah or release and then taken down and then yeah and vague and all that but yeah, yeah no we're, we're we're planning on playing a lot of shows and like we we uh we were playing shows before and all that it's just we weren't venturing out to other cities like you're out in abbotsford we're in van like we could do a show in van one night and a show in abbotsford the next you know and then even hit like cam loops and Kelowna, like all yeah. in one go yeah, kind of thing to so. get you out to because we got this uh our, our local skate shop does like concerts uh oh that's awesome that's where i that's where i started shooting concerts that was where my first concerts to shoot i shot like punk concerts there and like indie rock and like rap shows there so uh, yeah if that ever happens again that'd be dope to get like collision course out there because they've actually yeah. had some like pretty big like vancouver names show up there it's, it's always a Sweet. super sick time if yeah, that ever no, that'd comes be awesome. Back again, that'd be great. <laughs> awesome, cool. So we are flying through these. We are now on the third question. Anton, are you ready? Yeah. For a third question, it is where and where was the favorite show that you've played? Ooh. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that's a good one. It's a tough um, one. Yeah, we played like a lot of good shows, and obviously because like. I've played with a lot of different lineups in the band over time. And like, I've played the same venues, but with different people in the yeah. band. So it's made for some interesting things happening, good and bad. Um, I mean, this last show we had right before, like all the, like shut down of big events, like literally before they capped off, like before they were like, okay, only gatherings of 10 or less people. Yeah. That's the day before that is when we had our last show. And so it almost got shut down and we actually like sold out all the tickets and stuff. And there was supposed to be a lot of people coming. And then about like, I'd say roughly around like 50, 60 people showed up, which is still pretty That's good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Cause it was a big place. It was the Astoria. So like everybody um, was able to kind of spread out and all mm -hmm. that, you know, and be all good about it. Um, that was a really good one. And then, um, oh man. So I would say, Oddly enough, it's one of the earlier shows. The best one ever was yeah. at the Lido Theater in Fort St. John. And uh, I was playing with Chris and uh, Dane, who was our first drummer. And um, it was a Nirvana tribute night. Um, and the whole thing is, like, I th with that, I think it was, like, the day before my birthday or something like that. It was April 8th. Yeah. So, like, it was our already a good vibe, you know. And then um, we used to do, like, a lot of covers. Like, we only had three originals, and then we would we would play full, like, all-night bar shows with, like, four 45-minute sets of, like, Weezer, Nirvana, 90s covers and it stuff like that. Like a pretty good time. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, there were all these bands, yeah. and we were, all, we were the young kids that nobody had heard about and stuff. And then I can pull off a pretty good Nirvana voice, um, as I've been told. And then we just got up there, and we just killed it. And, uh, yeah, that, that one, or, um, any time we played a place called the old church, which has been shut down now, but that was also in Fort St. John. Yeah. 
and there was this really cool dude uh, named Burke who owned this church and like Burke? lived there. Yeah, and he, he lived there and had oh, like a it. concert venue downstairs. Yeah. It was like this old old church, pretty self-explanatory, right? So, and it was just really cool. There was art everywhere. Just a whole bunch of local bands would play there, and just everybody would hang out, get drunk, have a good time. Yeah, it was pretty chill because everybody was really nice and literally you just finish your set and you step off of the stage and you sit down on a couch that's right next to the <laughs> stage and start drinking with people. So, uh, Okay, yeah, I, I, I get the vibe. I, I get it. I see. Yeah, yeah. It, it's nice. It's That's why I like grunge stuff, you know? Grungy stuff is fun and it's more authentic to me. But. Yeah, uh, it's like yeah, it's like part of the like the cool part about the, like, the skate shop. It's like you'll be in there all day. And then you'll just yeah. come back and it'll be completely different. And like you're like you're still chilling on the same couch that you were chilling in on there that day. But now there's like oh, there's people everywhere. There's people still skating because they still have like all their mini ramp and everything set up. Oh, nice! Uh, oh, that's sick. Damn, sounds like it. Sounds like it was a really good time on those early on days. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like all all the shows we have now and bars and stuff are awesome too, and yeah. we're like looking to really blow it out. But it's just um. I really like the shows up north, too, because, like, the whole thing is with the towns only being, like, a half an hour away from each other, everybody will come to multiple shows in one weekend, and so it's, like, all your friends there, and it's, like, just basically a huge party, right? Um, but, yeah, and looking to do that here, like, I, since I haven't been here too long, like, my circle of people's getting bigger, and now people are, co- like, yeah. gonna come, and it's, it's uh, it'll be good like that, so. Awesome. I'm hoping, at least. Okay, moving on to our fourth question we have are when, and so when do you feel most inspired to make your music? Um, when I'm angry or very sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, like sometimes I'll, I'll just be like, man, I have writer's block for like the past few months, and then I just look, I'm like, oh, hey, life's just been good. <laughs> um, I have that really weird, like, I like that really stereotypical trope of like musicians, like how they're always sad and stuff and yeah. use it to write and stuff. Um, but yeah, some of the best songs I've written are just like about re- being really bummed out or I was in a situation like that I didn't like, or like just kind of hindsight 2020 looking back on it. And then I can really like write about that um, really helps. I've, recently actually been trying to work on like doing like sitting there and songwriting instead of it just popping into yeah. my head um because i have the weird thing i like to make fun of myself and call it like my songwriter's psychosis where i have like full songs just pop into my head and it makes no sense to me is that um, wait so when you when you're writing do you like write a song or do you kind of just like get like super emotional and just like scream it out um so if we're doing the songwriter's psychosis yeah. thing what happens is i'll just be hanging out or i'll be like playing my guitar and literally a melody and some lyrics will pop into my head or sometimes i'll think of some i'll think of a melody and then literally the next time i sing it back it's words and then i oh. can hear the drums bass and guitar in my head along with it and it's really weird and it's like i'm when I songwrite, it's like I'm constantly trying to translate from like this weird music kind of fog I have going on in my head onto yeah. instruments, and and it's really weird. And that's why I'm also trying to learn the approach of like, okay, so I have this guitar riff, you know, or like this chord progression. Yeah. I'm gonna sit here and write something over it, and I'm I'm getting better at that too. And like some of the best stuff I've written as of recent I've found has been from that. Okay. Um, but also I like mixing it together. I'll, I'll like take fragments from the songs that pop into my head and then like change them or edit them or throw them in with another song I had, stuff like that. So That's interesting to hear coming from someone that works so closely with like the music industry, but like doesn't make music at all themselves, but makes everything around it. Like, it's neat to hear like the, how like people's creative process works for a different form of media aside from like all my visual stuff. Yeah, it's neat because like I kind of see what you're saying and like how it relates back to like how my kind of like ebb and flow of like working through the visuals of something is, but it's like yeah, it's a bit different, but yeah, it's neat. Yeah, and I think like 
the thing that's always unique about music is it's different for everyone, right? Like you get some people that like lots of people just come up with melodies randomly and that's where like a, there's a lot of big and small musicians that do that, you know, and then there's also um, amazing songwriters like um, I forget his name, it, Elton John's best friend who has wrote most of his huge songs for him just sits there and writes out some, maybe some poetry or some piano chords and stuff like that and just puts it together very mechanically and sitting there like, I'm going to write a song. Not like, oh, I'm bummed out, and then it just pops into his head, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it, it really is is weird, and there's no scientific way to do it, and that's kind of why it's awesome. <laughs> so, okay, cool. So we are moving on. Very quickly to our last question of the 5W's interview, and that is our why. So why did you choose hard rock slash grunge as your genre? Uh, I kind of grew up on it. Yeah. That's kind of the whole thing. Um, it's really weird. Like, my music taste, like, I get along with a lot of, like, 30-year-olds yeah. and, like, 40-year-olds because, like, they grew up in the 90s and stuff, right? And they they remember like all these like if I'm hanging out with somebody and you give me the auxiliary chord kind of thing, like I'll throw on these songs and lots of people my age will be like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, you, you know. Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, well, I showed him most of the grunge stuff that he listened to, and then he developed into hip hop and did his own thing, which is awesome, you know. Yeah. And um. But yeah, like I was saying earlier with like my dad inspiring me with music, he's also shown me like lots of that music. Like my dad always listens to Tool and stuff like that. And I've always, Foo Fighters has been like a really big band I've always loved. Same yeah. with Nirvana. And so like I've always listened to that sort of stuff and it's just really caught my ear. Like I can respect lots of other types of music like country and hip hop and stuff, but it's very rare that I can l listen to like like all I've been trying to listen to whole albums recently and like mm -hmm. Chris has sent me some hip hop ones and I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Like uh, there's some good technical stuff behind that. Some good rhymes. Some, when we were hanging good... out the other day at the pool, like, uh, it was, we're playing basically mostly just Chris's hip hop playlist. Uh, is yeah. that like, is that like a, not something you usually do or listen to or not at all? Mm -hmm. Um, no. And like, I've been trying to expand it cause I don't want to get like caught in a rut and I always like to hear new music yeah. too. That's the thing. But like just something that has like a really good riff or a really good solo just like hits this part in my brain that nothing else can. Yeah. And it, it's just like a weird higher euphoria I get just from like, I, I don't know, man, it, it's really weird. But, um, yeah, yeah that, that's kind of why I chose it too. And, like, the thing is, my voice has always been very, like, raspy when it comes to singing, mm -hmm. um, naturally, which for a lot of people isn't a thing. It's normally the opposite, right? And then they have to try to strain themselves or hurt their voices to do that. Um, so, and so naturally, it's became, like, really easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, so it just, my voice tends to be kind to that genre, um, is how I would put it. And, uh, yeah, no, it's just it's fun you can thrash around on stage you don't have to be too serious you know yeah. and when you want to be serious you can you want to be cool you can you know um you can write songs where people are dancing to them like arctic monkeys great yep. example they have really dancey rock and then you have foo fighters um where they have really mellow rock or some of their newer stuff really headbang you and then there's sound garden tool like all that is just such a wide what spectrum about like, uh, of music. black keys and like 21 pilots also very good dancey, very catchy. Um, I've been really digging some Black Keys and uh, 21 Pilots a lot. I've, I've been listening to Arctic Monkeys a lot. I just listened to, um, oh man, somebody might beat me up for this. I've, I'm forgetting the title of the album. Um, it's the one with 505 and Fluorescent Adolescent on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really good album and it's just really catchy. And then also sometimes they just come in there and shred a solo that melts your face off <laughs> you know so I, I just like stuff like that that's so, um but yeah no it's just a high energy too you can take anger out on it and, or just pent up energy so it's just like Whereas a combination like, of like so many things that all just kind of like ended up lining up together super well and you're like yep this works yeah yeah no because like some hip-hop you're sitting there and it's really chill and like really awesome vibes but it's like i'm a pretty neurotic human <laughs> so like i'm always like 
So you get into like the Denzel Curry area at all for hip hop? Because that sounds like something that might be a bit more your kind of speed. Um, I've listened to it a bit. Chris has really been trying to sell it to me, and I know a lot of other people are really digging it. But once again, it's just, and and I think another thing that appeals to me is sitting there like the like the making of beats is really cool to me. But to me, like in instruments kind of have more soul to them mm -hmm. if and like i'm not dissing them at all it's just that's kind of, i'm raised on rock and roll man like that's that's kind of it like yeah. you can sit there with your macbook and make a cool beat and then rap over it i think the rapping itself is awesome and that has plenty of soul in it but the sitting there and with your macbook not my kind of jive and also it, it's a different skill too it, it, like i said it's that more mechanical style of songwriting and really having an ear for it mm-hmm and I don't necessarily have an ear for it. I just have the random brain that pops in melodies, you know, so. Okay, yeah. sick. Well, that's it. We have done our five questions. We have done our who. We have done our what. We have done our where. We have done our why. And we have done our how. No, it's not how. I messed up. But either way, we have completed the interview. Thank you so much, Anton, for joining. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to you. Do you have anything else you guys you want to shout out or uh, plug before I wrap this up for us? Uh, yeah, no, so, um, we haven't really, like, fully announced, and we're still kind of securing a day due to some, um, kind of weird life stuff for the band members, um, but we're coming out with a single, um, a single? pretty soon. <laughs> Just one? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, we're coming out with a few, but we're doing the first big one, which okay, we filmed okay. our music video for, and this is the one we're teasing, so it's, uh, it's called Run, um, nice. and that's kind of, that's the first time I've said that to you out in the open, kind of like that for stuff like this. Um, so, and you've heard, you've heard it. Would you say it's good? Yeah. I would definitely it? say it's good. I would definitely say it's good. Yeah. I like to think it's a, it's, it's a bit of a headbanger, you know, yeah. all fun, good solo in there, but, uh, we'll be releasing that soon. Hopefully in the next few months, probably couple months, right. um, maybe a bit shorter, but we'll have a, uh, date for that pretty soon. It'll be nice to have you guys have some music to actually listen to out because, like, I was trying to like. Get I know. Ready for this, I, I know. Like, I couldn't find anything anywhere? I scoured the internet. We no had way. to tear it down because no, the I whole it, thing. I get it. It, uh, uh, but, yeah, I, I've explained the whole. I can explain it too because most people don't know as well. Like, with the whole thing was like the first EP. I really liked it and it was really great. But I, I'm. I recorded it in my parents' basement when I was an angry stoner teenager, and it sounded great, but it's just we're trying to develop a lot, too. Yeah. And then that second EP, great, but I also recorded it on my own. I'm no, I'm not by any means like a sound engineer. Mm -hmm. So um, we're probably going to re... We might re-record some things because we're maybe thinking of doing... A, a bigger release with more songs after these singles, but that's down the line. I'm not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and we were also having some online distribution problems because you use like these big sites and then you can't get a hold of them and they put it on the wrong people's channels and it's your music yeah. and they get the money for it. It's, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of things. So, um, it might, there, there's going to be a lot more music coming in this next year. Like a lot, right. and uh, yeah, well, I'm I can super promise. excited that. for that. It'd be nice to be able to like oh, listen to more Collision, of course. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up right here. Thanks, guys, for watching. This has been the Five W's Interview Podcast, where we ask five questions: one for who, one for what, one for where, one for why, and one for I can't. Why did I mess it up the second time? Doesn't really matter. Anyway, <laughs> this has been my guest, Anton. My name is Reese Sutter. I've been your host. And uh, tune in next time. We're going to have another great guest. We're going to have another sick conversation. Uh, have a great day. Have a good day.